Dear Sapdolf, what will we learn from today's lecture? Today we will talk about the network ports used by SAP systems. This is a very important topic not only for basis wizards. Network engineers and security specialists often ask about it too. That's not surprising, because this knowledge is also needed for opening firewalls and network traffic management. Yes, I know there is often so much confusion on this topic. Especially since numerous SAP components use multiple ports. I will try to explain this very clearly. You will see where to find information and how to understand it. I highly recommend watching one of the previous videos. Understanding the concept of instance number in the SAP is crucial in any discussion about network ports. Without understanding it, it is impossible to open a firewall properly. If you missed that episode, maybe think about subscribing to the channel for the future. Yes, it's always worth taking the time to do so. But let's focus on our main topic. SAP has prepared an interactive site where you can search for information about the ports used by all the applications in their portfolio. It is not difficult to find it. Here you go. A neat table opens. As I said, it is interactive. In the first column, you can select the application you're interested in, so that you can more easily find the entire list of ports used by a particular product. Next, you have a column with the name of the port or protocol, from which you can initially make out what it is used for. The next field tells you what port name in the ETC services file is associated with it. As you may remember, I discussed this in the episode about instance number. The next column gives the port number, which is used by default. That is, for the default instance number, usually 00. Then there is a range of ports for any instance number. Somewhat confusing, as usually only 100 numbers in this range are accepted. Rule is the most important information. According to this, you can figure out what port is used for a particular instance number. Now, external is an indication of whether the port should be considered for opening the firewall to the outside world. That is, whether programs can expect to communicate with this port, or whether it is only used to transfer data within the system. Of course, yes does not yet mean uh, that you should open the firewall without a second thought. Fixed means that a SAP does not recommend or support changing this port number. And ultimately the comments. Sometimes useful, sometimes not. Just like Sapdalf's stories. This is understandable, but could we go over it with an example? Sure. Let's say I'm looking for an HTTP port for Java. I choose the right filter for this application. This makes the number of ports limited to 14. At the top I have the HTTP port. It is not mentioned in the ETC service. By default it has a value of 50,000, but it can take different values from 50,000 to 59,900. The rule clearly states that the port number is 5 then 2 digits of the instance number and finally 2 zeros, so it is clear that not every port in the listed range can be used. What's more, above the range column is a box for searching for a port. It would be very useful for identifying unknown ports, but it does not work as it may seem. I enter the HTTP port number, for instance number 3, and nothing is found. So it is just a simple text search in a column, which is a shame. However, you probably already understand how it works. You can identify different ports this way. HTTPS for encrypted communication. P4 port. P4 tunneled through HTTP. IIOP. Telnet. And so on. Everything you need is in this table. I will disable the filter for now. Actually, this is a great source of truth about the ports. However, my impression is that there are fewer problems with Java connectivity. Or maybe Java is just less popular. There seems to be more trouble with ABAP-based systems. Hmm, you may be right. So let's explore the topic of ABAP system ports a little deeper. This will be useful whether you have an old ERP or a brand new S4 HANA. Let's put it into practice because that's the best way to remember. I will redefine the connection to my ABAP system. I want to use load balancing, like in real large systems. 
so I choose the Group Selection option, which connects me through the message server. I enter the system description. The system ID is A4H. Now it's a good idea to enter the address of the server so that the group name hints itself. This is the name of the group that my message server returned. And how did the program know what port was correct for this message server? You did not specify its instance number. Here it is. This is the message server port number definition for the A4H system. Regardless of the operating system, we can define what the message server port is for a given system ID in the services file. Of course, this can also be specified explicitly in the program, but it is good to know about the possibility of defining it in services file. Since it is defined by the logon group, I don't have to specify the SNC name manually, as it was read from the message server. The connection to the system is already defined. Since I would like to trace how my computer will connect to the SAP server, I will run a network traffic sniffer. I run Wireshark. I am only interested in packets whose destination is the IP of my SAP server. However, only very specific ones. Synchronization packets. This way, I will know which ports on the server my computer is trying to connect to. Now I switch to the SAP Logan. It goes quickly because it's a fast system. Now I can go back to Wireshark to see what packets have been logged. Three connections were logged. My computer connected to port 3601. We know that this is the port number of my message server. It's the one that was defined in the services file. Message server is supposed to answer what is the least loaded server in a given logon group. Of course, it gave the address and instance number of the only available instance on my system. That's why SAP logon knew to connect to port 3277, because that's the dispatcher of my application instance. My instance is, of course, 77, as you can see here. So we know that for users, we need to open message server and dispatcher ports on the firewall. That's right. Let's take a look at the SAP website some more, how it's defined there. I'm looking for the correct range of ports, meaning I'm interested in 3600. Here is the message server. As you can see, this is the entry in ETC services that I made on my computer. The port number is 36 instance number, so 3601 in my case. The port is marked as external, which confirms that it is used by users. Let's see the other port that SAP Logon connected to. 3200 is the beginning of the range I'm interested in. Yes, this is the dispatcher. The entries in ETC services are defined when the system is installed, and I showed them in the video on instance numbers. The port is 32 instance number, so 3277 in my case. The port is also external, so for users, and fixed for this instance number. Are these all the ports you need? Not really, but it's a good starting point. Let's go to the operating system for a moment to see what ports my system is listening on and what to associate them with. Let's start with the already discussed dispatcher port. The SS command was previously covered in a video on useful Linux commands. SAP system called A4H instance 77 dispatcher. It listens on port 3277 and everything is correct exactly as in the table. Next is the gateway port used for RFC communication. Three, three instance number. And how is in the system? That's right, gateway. In my case, 3377, according to the instance number. The next port is 48 instance number. Secure gateway, which is the same as before, but with encryption. Here it is. 4877. And yes, the same gateway. Let's see what we have next on the list. Let me say right away that the four ports we have discussed so far are absolute classics for ABAP systems. Now we'll start with the less standard ones. ICM ports actually have standard numbers, but it's very easy to change them and sometimes it is done. That's why you should always check your specific ICM configuration. As you can see, nothing is listening on port 8077, standard for ICM. 
Instead, I have port 80. Similarly, there is no port containing 443. I covered the topic in more detail in the video on ICM, but let's take a look at my setup for a moment. In the SMICM transaction, I can see what ports are defined. HTTP is port 50,000 and HTTPS is set as 50,001. I also have an additional port 80 as HTTP. When we look in the table, it is clear that HTTP and HTTPS are not fixed, so they can be changed. The last standard port for ICM is 25 for SMTP, so mail transfers. However, when we look into the system, we see that it is not active. In SMICM, you can see that it is assigned to port 0. If you're curious why, I invite you to watch the video about ICM. And that's it for ICM. Then we have two ports related to start services, which was described in more detail in the video about starting and stopping the system. Port 5 instance number 13 is the HTTP port of this service. 14 is for HTTPS. As you can see, there are three instances of SAP software on this server. We know the application instance 77 and ASCS with the number 01. And there's more about it in the system starting video. That's right, which is why we're moving on to the next port on the list, which is message server, which we already know. Here, of course, we note that the instance number is 01 and not 77, because message server is part of ASCS. But these are not all message server ports. We also have MS protocol over HTTP on port 81 instance number. In my case, of course, it is 8101. There is also a version of this protocol over HTTPS, but in my case, it is not active. Anyway, I can also show it. As you can see, there is nothing containing 444. Let's see what we have next. NQ server port is 39 instance number. Exactly the same as the one below. Internal message server port. I think it's a bit strange. Hmm. You're right. I smell a contradiction here. We need to investigate this. Let's see what is listening on port 3901. The name of the process clearly indicates message server. What about the unqueue server then? Let's see what the documentation says about this. The comment clearly states that the port number is determined by the ENQIO server port parameter. Instances, on the other hand, must have the ENQ server port parameter to know where to look for it. So we're looking in profiles, right? Yes, let's go to the profile directory. I'm looking for anything that contains the server underscore port. I should be able to see the NQIO server port. But there is nothing like that. In that case, perhaps a default value or one inherited from another parameter might apply here. I think it's worth going to the RZ11 transaction for a while to see what the current value of the parameter we're looking for is. ENQIO server port. No value on any level. Actually, it is not particularly helpful. Since the anchor server has become a separate entity, RZ11 may not show default values for it. I'll check with the source in that case. The SMENQ transaction is used to manage locks. I go to Server Administration. And I already see the server port in the table, but not the number, just the name. SAPDP01. I will try to find the definition from which it comes. Connections. Oh, I see. Parameters. Yes, here it is. ENQIO server port. Definition is SAPDP01. Let's see in ETC services what it is. Doesn't DP come from dispatcher? Yes, exactly. Port 3201 is the dispatcher port of application instance 01. However, in our case, 01 is not an application instance, but ASCS. Obviously, this did not prevent us from using this port for internal communication between application servers and the ANQ server. And this example shows that we should be very careful when opening the firewall. Many times I have seen whole ranges of dispatcher ports being open to the world as part of standardization. And NQ server ports should definitely stay behind the firewall. Can we somehow confirm that this NQ server is using this port? Sure. We'll use SS, as always. The name of the process clearly indicates that it is an ENQ server. 
Okay, all clear. I must say that a lot of these ports and decisions to be made, can we sum it up somehow? As you wish. This diagram shows all the major ports we have discussed. Let's consider for each of them whether to open access to it on the firewall. Sounds reasonable. What would you do with a message server port? I would open it up for users. Good choice. Although technically, neither the connection through the SAP GUI nor the RFC connections do not necessarily require a message server. But, if you want to have the functionality of a load balancer and logon groups, then you must have this port open. The connection may or may not be encrypted, so you need to take care of this by configuring the system accordingly. And what about message server over HTTP and HTTPS? This is never my first choice. I would open this only if this is really needed. And what do you think about internal message server port? Internal is internal. Do not open it. Very good. And queue server? It is used for locks. No one from the outside sets up locks without the help of the app. Very well said. What about the application instance dispatcher port? Needed for SAP GUI. Perfect. In addition, we know that the connection can be encrypted if we configure the system properly. That's right. There was even a video on the subject. What about the gateway port? There seems to be no encryption here. A very valid observation. Port 33 instance number I would not open if possible. As long as we are able to encrypt all RFC connections, it is not needed. But unfortunately, it often happens that the software on the other side is not ready for this. Therefore, we mark it conditionally. So secure gateway is OK? Yes, it is needed for RFC calls, for example, for various interfaces, but also, for instance, for developers using Eclipse to program in ABAPI. What about the ICM? It depends on the specific case, as configurations and solution architectures sometimes vary. Usually, some form of HTTP communication is required. It is good if it is HTTPS, that is, with encryption. On the other hand, often ICM is open only to Web Dispatcher, and Web Dispatcher is accessible to the world. So carefully consider each port. That seems to have covered everything. Yes. Maybe I will magically change the diagram at the end. It shows the ports for the example instance numbers. 0, 1 is ASCS. 0, 0 and 7.7 are application instances, for full clarity. I think this is fully understood. Thanks for the lecture. My pleasure. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, and maybe subscribe to the channel. Yes, it's important. And leave some kind of comment so it's clear that someone is watching these videos to the very end. May your ports always be closed to orcs and other malicious creatures, and open to those in need. See you next time.